There we go. Everybody, welcome to Absolute Sound. We're just hanging out after work. I want to invite you to our desk. I'm with Walt from Chicago. Aaron, one of our good customers, helps him with videos. We're going to talk about a lot of things that Angela Gilbert Young builds, and we're talking about how capacitance, the capacitors inside of an amplifier. I got a nice amplifier here from 1990. We pulled it apart so you can see it. A left and a right transformer, left and a right output, and capacitance energy filling in the output. So these are output devices, guys. We all know them. We've seen them in every amplifier in the world. They cool down on a heat sink and they play the music. Oh, by the way, I want to add something. Mm -hmm. The way you use the point to the knock on the amp, it might offend somebody. So I want, to I want to add that this amp is already broken. It's already broken. This has been thrown by a disgruntled wife. Maybe he didn't tell her what Physically he broken, spent. not just broken. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So these output devices, folks, need energy to work, right? Walt, you've seen I, it? I've seen those before. Aaron, you've seen these before? Yep. All right, so these transformers, the voltage they work at, to know how much wattage we get out of these, right? We've got uh, wattage. So voltage coming from these things basically is like speed for these, your wattage or your speed. Capacitance energy, so you go power, rectifier bridge here. This is torque, so it's energy also. This is direct current energy, capacitor banks. These capacitor banks and this one, obviously in the middle, they're shared for both sides. So the amount of this torque will have an effect on how the thing sounds. Now people will say in engineering or different things, which is totally fine, that even two of these little capacitors would operate enough so that we don't get enough ripple. We start out with a sine wave, then we go past this and we end up with just a top half sine wave. And then we go through the capacitor, the output, and we end up looking at how much ripples in the signal. And that's the, a little wiggle in the signal. It's always there. And the more capacitance energy, generally speaking, the lower the ripple is. So we, we, we want to remove ripple. When you put these in here, Gilbert Angela Young builds these in two different formats. This is one for a line stage. This is called an SP capacitor pack, guys. So in there you have a preamp section here. This is holding the signal path, which is the signal from the music coming in off the RCA jacks on the bottom here. So when we add something like this, and at 35 volts, this is half a million microfarads, this has an abundant amount of torque. And if we add FCF that, that Angela Gilbert Young makes, this is an FCF. So inside this, we've got one open so you can see the inside of this. You'll see Romax 14.2 copper, not circuit boards like here. That See, these traces are extremely thin. So there's 26 electrons per atom. That offers a lot more speed. Let's call it dumping speed. I know that's inaccurate, but it gives the people that don't know anything about electrical a, a pretty good uh, picture of how that, that uh, let's say, water line will allow this energy out. Now, I'd, historically in the past, we've looked at all this silicone, and people say, oh, well, look at that build construction from Angela Gilbert. But if you actually look inside it, you're going to find out that this is genius in design. Now, why would you use 40 durometer, a nice soft silicone throughout this? A burning byproduct of, of silicone is mineral water, which is non-conductive. Inside these things, each of these capacitors, you'll see every single one of them at key joints underneath and in between each capacitor is damped at 40 durometer for vibration, which is very much the same as sorbothane. Guys, you know how much people spend on stands and different things to isolate what the whole steel at the bottom. Why wouldn't we isolate and and decouple and damp all the vibe source? Correct, the part itself. Yep. What's that cost us? Nothing. Nothing. Just work and labor. Beautiful effort. Somebody has to whip this, get all of the uh, air out of it, and put a beautiful capacitor bank inside that. So inside this, when I plug this into an amplifier. And we obviously hook something in the back. What we're doing is we're taking this torque and we're doubling it. And we double it at a modest rate. And what that does is these output transistors, in theory,
basically have rip, you know, the, Lake Engineering will look at ripple rejection. But in practicality, um, you need tons and tons and abundance more energy if you can afford it, and not on boards but on rails so there's speed so it gets quickly to the output. In the, um, it's like filling in holes in the music. And what that means is, as this transistor or output device is finishing, little tiny details, they'll, most you know, math equations will say that's more than good enough. But in reality, in complex signals, having abundances of torque allows the ripple to be so low that the noise floor is low across the board and, the, and whatever music there that's finishing will hold longer and sustain longer. Whatever body of the music's energy or output on this, the sound or tone of it and how thick it is, is all determined by torque. Because these transformers and these regulations coming in at 60 hertz in North America are delayed by 20 milliseconds, or no, sorry, 8.3 milliseconds. So if this needs something, it's got to wait 8.3 milliseconds to get it. But with all the torque in here, that fills in all of the other times. So it's extremely important. And with music complexities, when this thing starts to play, the abundant energy makes this sound, all devices sound way more abundant, like they're more powerful. Yes, the wattage does not increase, guys. Well, and because the uh, torque is there, you're drawing from a lake of energy, you're not just drawing the energy from a pond, so the chances of one of these devices running out of power is basically small. That's right. And, and in, that's in, why they anyway, sound good. That's, that's a good point. And you, made, you mentioned Lake Hot Tub, all that stuff, and that's a brilliant point because there's another thing about, in North America, it's like 8.3 seconds from here to here because we're at 60 cycles. When you deal with uh, capacitance energy, there's another huge effect, Walt. And you had... Say you just had this. Well, now you've got a kiddie pool. And coming in the back is a left and a right jack. And let's consider that white paint and red paint for the left and right. Well, all these are connected together. You can see that they all touch, grounds and all that stuff, and they basically leak back and forth. So we've got a, a smeary little leaky noise floor. We've taken this little hot tub with two capacitors that are standard in most gear that we see a basic amplifier receiver from the 70s, all the new stuff that comes out. And that red and white paint part in leaks together and turns pink and we can see it. And if we have all of this, which is now a hot tub, we still pour in red and white and we still have leakage, crosstalk and or noise between each other and we can see it. So but if we start to get bigger, that's the lake or well, the ocean if we go bigger than this. And, and so one of the things that happens here because the energy has been increased yep. here, that's filling in any holes caused by the leakage. Well, it's filling in any holes caused by the stress of that transistor and its requirement of more, let's say, microcurrent or usable operating current outside main current. But also, the, the energy you talk about that lake drops your leak, which would be noise floor, to midnight black in the background. So it makes a huge difference in what we perceive as having, if this is leaking together, we've got a, a couple of pair of glasses on, and if we've got a lake in here and we've got left and right so separate that we can't see any red, white, or pink, it, the energy works like a black hole if you go to a huge abundance. And when that black hole's there, we get a, a, midnight, black, back, a midnight black background and we get almost no or negligible crosstalk. So this black hole is removed left and right to sound like they're truly separate. You can imagine in, tra in transients, rise time, you can imagine in sound stage how that changes things. And all we want people to do is know how well this is made up with someone 38 years of experience, how and why they choose to do this. And regular production line industry stuff can't do this and, and it's just, it's not in the, it's not in the works money wise. This, we're lucky because Angela Gilbert works alone in a factory at home, and the wonderful products she makes are gifts to people, and the only way to know that is anybody comes, grabs one, we lend it to them, and say, go figure it out for yourself. And I'm, I'm not talking audiophiles. I mean, if I get a sock-eared fool, a, a person who's never listened to music ever in their life, 
just like that they hear it and they're like it's not louder it's not better it's completely transformed like you've slowed down time because these little devices that are now working at such a premium thick level seem to allow your brain an extra second to pick up everything and enjoy the music more you can really hear it well i've always been a skeptic when it comes mm -hmm. to things like this mm -hmm. so i would say to anybody yeah. who is skeptical about this you have to experience it yourself and convince yourself that it's a real thing that's right and what you will find is it is a real thing that's and correct it has tremendous value if you care about how things sound mm -hmm. that is absolutely correct and Aaron's you've at home you had the one of our first funkies in here and I know how much you like it and you took home one of our FCFs and you can't really qualify it in whatever it is percentages or whatever but would it be fair to say that it's ridiculous to think that no one could hear it yeah so so how would you qualify you know when you went home and you plugged in your first FCF and you've done it a couple times now because it's uh, I think it's like 1100 bucks and you don't want to spend it yet but you'll get there one day or we'll work it off whatever the case may be and good fun you're a young fellow starting out in the hi-fi world what would you know back and forth in your two experiences with it how much did you, how much better did you think it was or how would you tell people what you, what you heard like you said it it fills in it just gives it excess gas mm -hmm. for those dynamic points in the in the music because mm -hmm. it's not just a, an equation did you did you notice that it's more um that there's a thickness to it or a body to it that is different from the original or or that things slowed down and gave you time to hear them more? Yeah, like more... For um, lack of a better way to explain it, sustain. More sustain or, or resonance, yeah. Like just energizing the speakers, everything, all the notes lasted longer, yeah, you could say that. Okay, so basically you can hear that there's, the output devices are strengthened with a lot of torque. Well, we were listening to some classic Willie Nelson a few mm -hmm. minutes ago. That's right. And we were able to hear the difference by hot plugging uh, an FCF into a unit. That's one of these, folks. And you would hear the difference between having the unit plugged in yeah. and having the unit not plugged in. That's right. What's the difference? One difference is the music had a fullness to it with the FCF that just wasn't there without it. It had a more solid uh, bottom end to it that just wasn't there without the FCF. And that would apply across the board. And maybe it's because without the FCF, there were holes in the music that were being filled in by the FCF. That's correct. I mean, that's my take on it. It's a long and short of it. And I wanted people to, to dispel any myths about when they see these things to have silicone in them or what have you. Like, they used to take amplifiers and they'd put capacitors. This is from another... From giant time. 70s yep. time yep. and they'd have these great big clamps on these hold in which it, this looks very mechanically sound and it is it's not going anywhere that's for sure but there's two things about that i think you you change you can change the voltage is that right when you squeeze this a little better you change the microfarads i can't remember you which one is. You, you change the capacitance when you squeeze it so we're squeezing this so we are changing the capacitor by grabbing the outside jacket this one is on silicone and what we did was we had a, a little metal vibrator under here that we could change frequency on. And you can put your hand on the two caps. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, this cap is dead quiet compared to that cap simply because it's mounted on 40 durometer silicone. Mm. So that's why all this goop that would maybe appear to be like a DIY thing isn't a DIY thing. It's done for a specific purpose. And you'll see it in all Angela Gilbert's gear, even on critical joints to seal them and give them damping and any rods that are out are damped. This is all done and looked at and listened to and tried over a period of 30 years to come to the beautiful products that he and she make today. And I wanted to get that across to people, hopefully let them understand a little more about it. Um, more videos in the future, if you have questions or anything you, you want to reach out with, info at Absolute Sound, email away. I'd be happy to help you out. Well, I think the main thing to take away from this mm -hmm. is this is not about increasing the wattage. It's no. about improving the sound quality. That's right. That's really what we're talking about here. And when you experience this yourself, you will become 
a believer. That's right. In this technology. That's right. And that's all we're we're help we're trying to help people not spend as much, not throw away their old gear, not take a loss, and, and, and improve I'm, what they have. I'm a dealer for mm -hmm. uh, these units, and mm -hmm. Mike is a dealer for these units, mm -hmm. and we both like to sleep at night, and we sleep at night knowing that we've helped our customers get something better for themselves. That's right. And that's all we're interested in at yeah. the end of the day. And conveying something that is true innovation because yes. it's simply not done in the industry. Th this speed and you know these circuit boards where they use capacitors versus these bars where they use capacitors and our stuff, there are no thin circuit boards that are all sealed off. Everything where the dielectric or the edge is in air, giving you maximum speed. We all know the best dielectric in the world is air. And the circuit is laid out not like an old 90s amplifier, but a perfect one. Well, and, but if you have one of these, we, this will help. And one thing that we didn't even mention, which as long mm -hmm. as we're filming this, we might as well mention it. Come in and do a close-up on these solder connections here. Yep. These are not typical solder connections that you would get from a wave soldering machine. No. That's a real bead of solder here. That And here, every place where you see solder, there's yeah, actually the enough solid there. there solder there to See make a here. solid connection and that too has a different makes a difference in the sound quality well every single connection is a singer in the choir folks let's let's face it what's a slow blow fuse it's a piece of wire with a ball of solder in the middle that's right that's right so we're collecting with electrons slowing down speeding up echoing ringing we're doing a lot of little things we can do with that depending on frequency or its use and we're changing it but the more good singers in the choir the better chance we have right, you're of, of making these things. transferring accurately. That's correct. You get the musical truth across with abundant energy and speed. That first step, as the music rises, that first little instance of energy is everything. And then how it holds in the middle, also continuation of everything. How it finishes without rippling the signal, without a noise floor, and finishes is also everything. They all matter. Everything matters. Everything counts whether we can measure it or not. Anyway, thanks for listening. I hope that shed some light on it. I know there's a lot of technical stuff in here that it confuses the heck out of people, but we're trying to give a basic metaphors of, of, of more simple uh, provision of speed energy and torque energy and why they're used in output devices. And after 38 years of R&D and, and production, we're very proud of Angela Gilbert Young, and we want you to know about him. Thanks. Thanks for watching.